I'll move on to my QB bust. And it's a guy I have been cherishing. I've been touting. I love this guy. I love Dak Prescott. I just don't think he's going to at all live up to ADP. And we have to remember that losing Amari Cooper is a big deal. Amari Cooper is a good player. He's always been a good player. And now he's disappeared. So that whole aspect of the offense is gone. That's one part. The other part is that Dak Prescott threw touchdowns at 6.2% of his flat passes last year. League average was around four and a half. Dak Prescott hovers around 4.8 to five. So that number is going to drop. That number will drop. You don't lose pieces and then get better. So if there's going to be less touchdowns and then less passing yards, potentially, because he also threw the most amount of passing attempts in his, in his career, which again, when you lose weapons, you tend to regress the entire offense and balance out, which Mike McCarthy has done before. So I think that's what we're going to see here. It's just not boning up well for a QB7 price. And that's that's really what I have a problem with. Like, Riley, would you rather, right? I, I'm going to throw out some names here. I want you to know who would you rather take. Would you rather Dak Prescott? And he's going at 61 overall, according to Fancy Pros, which is about, what's that? What's my math? In the fifth round. You're taking Dak Prescott in the fifth round. Would you rather him or would you rather take a chance on either of the Broncos wide receivers? Oh, that's – I'd give me the receiver 100 because I'm, I'm, rather, I like Corlett yeah. a lot, and Jerry Judy is just very talented. Yeah, and then you factor even, in even, like, outside of, even outside their specific names, just because I like both of those names, I get like what you're going for, like guys with the, that upside that are drafted in that area. I'll 100 percent take the position player. Yeah, and I'll take the Darnell Mooney that goes after him, the Brandy Cooks that goes after him, the Allen Robinson that goes after him, and then obviously something I think Riley and I both share the belief of is that these guys, Dak Prescott doesn't have a ceiling to me. Because he also ran 150 yards last year in 16 games. He only had 150 rushing yards. Dak's ceiling is non-existent. And when you're investing a top pick at quarterback and avoiding investing in that wide receiver, the Brandon Cooks, the Allen Robinsons, the guys that will actually help your team, you need upside. Because otherwise, you can just wait. We can wait and take any of the guys in the double-digit rounds if you're even in super flex, he might be steady, but he doesn't have the ceiling that I want relative to the investment you have to put in him. That's that's kind of my belief on Dak Prescott. I love him. I still like CD Lamb. I can still like Dalton Schultz, but I don't think the touchdowns and the efficiency or the rushing yards are going to be there to live up to a QB seven sixth round price tag. I wouldn't take him lower than the ninth. Yeah, and just just in the in the interest of not doubling up and having the same pick I, I would have picked him I, I went with Justin Fields just so we can talk about different guys but QB7 is really rich for someone who who a we're expecting them to run the ball a lot because they have two really good running backs and B lost Amari Cooper 